it's Sarah and it's time for the June art journal page of the little pages that we've been doing by the month and it's already the last week of June I just can't get over how time flies they don't say that for nothing anywho so what I thought I think I saw something on Facebook and it inspired me and we're gonna do a little sailboat on a lake or something uh, we're gonna do collage but the first thing how I'm I've been doing it is we're doing a half a piece of mixed media paper so I just cut it in half and we'll use that as our page this is just the Strathmore mixed media paper 9 by 12 but it's a nice um, strong paper you're going to need a few different collage papers so I pulled just some go to's my music I got a map here book pages these are actually business envelopes you know that you would send checks in check envelopes I guess this one's from Target so I use that for my sales mm, just gather up a few pages that you can use to do your collage and then for your background we're going to use the brayer technique because it's so simple and I love it um, and then we will be doing some floating when we add our details uh, but basically that's it so the first thing I'm gonna do is I gathered up a few colors sky and ocean colors so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit <coughs> and we'll do stenciling and stamping as well so you want to get your go-to stencils nothing fancy just uh, I usually use one or two different ones. Actually, you could put words, but that sometimes that's distracting. Um, I usually go use the same ones, so I'll find them in a minute. Um, I didn't have them prepared. I don't know why they're not right in the front. Anywho, um... I'll look for them in a minute but the first and then some stamps which I just always have my go-to stamps as well you know I like to use the Diane Reevely stamps a lot this is my script I've even carved my own stamps so whatever you love use that and uh, what else that should get us started all right so let's get some color down and I'm gonna start with the darkest color and I'm gonna I use a palette I have this just palette paper I'm gonna put out some of this darkest blue this is called deep midnight and I use craft paint but just use whatever you have and I'm gonna start at the top and put a little at the bottom I might as well just clean off you know what I was just looking through some of my papers and some of the um, pages that I clean my brayer on are so cool <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with something to use those with and like I said we're gonna float uh, which is a technique I love to use I'm a, I'm a decorative painter so that's how the way I learn to do shading and highlighting let's do some of this sapphire and I'm going to start bringing it more towards the middle and kind of stay actually there's going to be a horizon line here so I could put a little more there but it doesn't matter it's background remember this is not the final focal piece so I'm gonna I'm gonna start this one here and here this is only background so have fun don't worry about this this is not any big deal and you can always go over this with a little bit of white if it gets too dark or you don't like where it's going but this is looking great so far I mean I know I have these two big blobs but so what they're in the sky now I have a couple uh, pearl colors 
These are pearlescent paints, and I love to add those because they have shimmer and shine. This one's called Sea Mist Pearl, and what else did I grab? Ooh, Blue Ice Pearl. So I think I'm going to stick with the blue ice in the sky, and maybe I'll do the Sea Mist more on the bottom. And this is sheer. It's not, it's transparent, so it's going to be just like when you turn the page it may show up but it might not even show up that much but you see that and then I'll put this greener one the sea what's it called sea mist pearl across the bottom Um, I think I need to go back with that dark, or I'm going to go back over this with white. <clears throat> That's what I think I'll do. And then I'm going to use, because this is just too dark for me, I'm not loving it. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white right here and try, like I don't mind it along the bottom, but uh, I think when I shade and highlight, I'll use this as my shading color. Actually, that's going to be really, really good. I'm liking this in here a lot. Um, what color didn't I use? I have this Bahama Blue, which it's really a turquoise. I think I do want to add a little bit of that. And I'm going to put that all over the place. You know what really would look pretty too? Some purple. Purple would probably really look nice. I'm just going to be very gentle. See, that's me being gentle. Not so much. Got a little a turquoise got away from me there. I'm going to just wipe my palette off. Need a place to put some white. That didn't work. But the white doesn't, it doesn't matter if it gets a little blue in it. Try not to get my nails all messy. We'll see how that goes. But I got, I ended up getting the gel. I was, I went for a pedicure and my nails have just been terrible. And I got the gel, but I love this color. It's just like a sheer um, sparkly color almost. All right, let's see how this goes. Of course, my brayer is full of blue. And I'll just try to tone it down. And then I'm going to come back with, um, maybe we'll leave it. Then we'll just start stenciling. I think that might be where I need to go. Now I have to remember, just go easy. Yeah, it's working though. I like it much better. It looks, I like it. And then I think I want to do one more little bit of the sapphire or maybe like a baby blue. I have paint behind me. That's what I'm looking for. This Cape Cod. I, I want it even lighter. I'm going to go back in with this. The whispering turquoise. See, I don't know. I have too much turquoise. Maybe I should just stop. I think that's good. All right, good. We're just going to stencil now. That's what we'll do. I'm going to let this dry and come back with a couple, just a couple stencils. Nothing, nothing major. I usually use my same old one, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm excited. I'm gonna, I don't want to zoom in too much, but I've got these three colors. So I did the darkest blue, medium blue, and a light blue. 
little bit of cosmetic sponge and some stencils that have a fairly small pattern to them and I'm gonna start adding color kind of on top of where the color already is not too much paint on your sponge so, so it doesn't bleed under so kind of where it already was this is such a dark color I'm gonna go over this probably And I'm going to put a horizon line in too. And again, guys, just have fun. Enjoy the process. Don't get worked up over it. This is background. We're going to cover this. We're going to be collaging paper over this. So you're not going to see a ton of it. You're going to see some poking through. That's the idea but this isn't your focal point. I'm going to do circles with the medium blue. But I'm a heavy hand, so you can do this as light as you want, as you as you want you know so you don't have to put it everywhere I just can't stop myself I really have a hard time I'm gonna bring some of this back up here see this might be too much in the middle but that's all right see I lost a lot of this medium blue so I'm gonna put it back in with this stencil kind of just all around Good. I'm gonna go in the last color is that turquoise. Let's do some letters. I'm gonna put a few letters. This is a Diane Reevely stamp, I'm pretty sure. Can't really see it. It's very I see only a little bit. It probably is because it's such a light color. I need a darker background, so I'm kind of going over the dark area. You can see some. I'll go up here. This is where it's really going to show up. And then I'm probably just going to put my sun right over top of this. You, I don't know if you'll even see it. A little bit down here. And this is opaque. I, I didn't use any of the gel. I'm sorry, gel. The um, pearlescent for this because it's too sheer. There we go. All right, I think. I'm good with that and then just checking my nails do a little stamping I didn't have very many blues so I really only have this dark blue and you know what I love is my script stamp this is stays on oh, I love the smell of stays on so I'm gonna put a little bit of this oh yeah maybe a lot because <laughs> I love it so much I love the color good what else do I want to do let's try and see what this teal it's really teal that's okay I think that turquoisey color and then I do have purple let's do the letters since I did letters, I'm going to do these in the teal. Make sure they're not upside down. Oh, they show up. Yay. And 
And then I think What do you think? I think that blue is so dark it almost looks black. Um, what about spatter? Do I need spatter? I love spatter. We'll spatter at the end. All right, so now that's our background. Now we're going to start adding the collage papers to it. So let me move my paints out of the way for now because I will be using them again. I've already cut my little design. I basically, I just kept it real simple. We'll do a sailboat. So I got to create a horizon line, but let me see how this lays out first. A sun. See how it's going to cover stuff up. Am I in the shot? Let me go up a little, sorry. Uh, we got some clouds and a sailboat. That's a big sailboat. Like So yours can be scaled down however you want. And then I did cut a piece for the boat to kind of... So I cut this piece of map with a little wavy line on it. So I think I'm going to lay that in at the end. It's going to cover the whole bottom. So maybe I'll move it down because see I don't really want to lose that. Huh, that's funny. Now the whole bottom is going to kind of be like that. That's okay. I think it's okay. I'm probably going to do that. Alright, so I'm going to use Mod Podge. I like Mod Podge. This is the matte Mod Podge. And I have an old junky brush. I have all these old junky brushes that I keep for Mod Podge. And we're going to, let me make sure this is dry. I'm just going to give it a quick um, heat gun. I'm, I've used permanent ink, so that should be fine. The paint is you know, that dries. Mod Podge should be able to go over this whole thing. You know what I'm going to do first is make a horizon line. So let's divide it right about, I got to do this straight, right? In the middle, I think. I don't want it to be crooked. It's kind of crooked. I can use a ruler. Why not? You don't want your horizon to be crooked. I have a T-square type ruler. Make a nice line. So you can probably see that. Oh. Yeah, you can see it. Um, my potch. And I like using this little bottle. It's so convenient because you can just, I'm going to try not to get this all over my nails. See, getting your nails done, it's not a crafter, you know, thing to do because I, I, I'm a messy crafter too. So I'm kind of just lining that up. You could just put it on and then cut the edges after. That's probably what I'm going to do with the uh, ocean wave part that I did at the bottom. Uh, let's put a cloud. This paper is really soft. It's like thin and older. So just be careful with your papers because they will rip. Like if you're using tissue or anything, I'm not even going to put any on the bottom of that because it's so thin. I'm just going to do it on the top. And a little bit right here. You know, this size is such a good size to work on too because, oops, 
I want to move it up a tiny bit. Um, yeah, it's not too overwhelming. It's it's a really good size. I'm liking working on this 9 by 12s It's a little crooked. Um, so the boat is going to be, and one of these sails is a little taller. I made this one shorter and wider, and this one's taller and thinner. So I can overlap the cloud a little bit. Let's see, that looks good. It's kind of, I don't really want too much, uh, I think I'm going to pull it down a little because I don't want too much covered on the bottom when I put those waves on. I might regret that because I really love the way the page, the background looks. And then I'm just going to leave a little space um, for the mast in the middle. So it's very deco art. I don't know what you, <laughs> what you call it. Not realistic, guys. Don't. Yeah, don't think I'm a realistic painter or artist for sure. Um, so yeah, so then, see I kind of want to take a look at this again. I think it needs it. I want to do that, but do I? can I just cut a strip? Uh, I think I can. And like maybe put a little one back there. I think I'm going to cut it into a strip. I don't know. I'm just playing. It's my piece. I can do what I want to. Right? Let's see what this looks like. And then use this piece up there. Ah, looks kind of weird. I think thinner might even be better, just like a real thin strip. See, this is, I tried to be prepared <laughs> so that I wouldn't take time like this, but sometimes you just gotta figure it out. And, you know, I think it's nice sometimes when you can see me do that. This is maybe, I like it. I think I'm gonna go with it. I might cut it down a teensy weensy. Yeah, I have room. I'm just gonna cut these down a little bit, like, like just take a teensy weensy off of it, like a quarter inch, if that. Maybe I can use that for something, but yeah, I think it's better. All right. Um. When it's a thicker paper, you can definitely add the Mod Podge to the back of the page too, the back of the paper too, because it, it is going to adhere a bit better for you. Try and make sure it's straight. With my head in the way, probably. a little crooked 
Hey, it's on the ocean. Ha! Huh. It can be a little crooked. I want this to be... But yeah, I'm glad I have a little... I'm showing a little bit of the background underneath this too. I think that looks cool. So that's good. It's sticking over the edge a little bit, but I will trim that. And then I want to put... this piece under here a little bit. I just licked my finger to kind of catch it. So this I think I'm going to put like right there. This one might be in the running for one of my favorites. I really liked my owl that we did with the painted papers technique. But this is similar. I'm going to put this. Oops. Like has to, it kind of has to go. I wanted it to be over that. Am I in the shot? Yeah. And then this one, oh, it's actually perfect, a little bit over even. All right. Nope, this one. And I just eyeballed this when I cut the paper, when I cut the little pieces out. I mean, it's basically a triangles and squares. You know, it's not, and even the clouds. Some people, I actually think I have a cloud punch, but I just wing it. And it usually comes out all right. And then we'll just coat that, and we're done. That's all I'm going to add anyway with collage. And, oopsie. Got to let that dry. What else? So, if, now we're going to paint. So the next thing we're going to do, oh, I got to talk to my hubby too. So you're going to get your brushes out and get ready to paint. All right. Sorry about that. But um, so I just added this. I did a mast. So I just cut a piece of book page and probably it was like a quarter inch, but then I just took my scissors and cut it even thinner. And then I cut a little flag out of some more of the map paper, a different color. All right, so we're done. We're ready to start shading. And this is the fun part now. I'm a decorative painter, painter for years. And the technique I like to use in my art journaling is called floating. And the thing is, um, you can get this uh, tech, you can get this look, you know, the shading and highlighted look by using your, um, see if you coat this whole thing with gel medium or uh, even the Mod Podge, you'll be able to put your big brushes on here. What are they called? Your um, Faber-Castell big brushes and smudge out your um, shading and highlighting. 
so I don't want you to feel like you have to float it's just what I'm used to and I want to do that in my art journal so um, that's what I'm gonna do and I didn't dry this uh, and to float I like to use an angle brush and I have other videos guys go back and have a look if you want to check it out but I will give you a lesson in floating and I really go fast I'm pretty fast at it but take your time and I will show you the idea now I'm gonna use the dark blue so I used uh, deep midnight blue um, do I want to use Payne's gray no I'm gonna stick with this and then I'm going to use the sapphire on the water part as my shading color. So to keep it a little bit different. And maybe we'll highlight two. But for right now, you need water. And I just have this on my desk all the time, which it's not, it's a mason jar. You're going to need a pile of napkin, or I'm sorry, paper towels. I have a couple here. And I just, because this is what you're going to use to soak up some water that's going to be on your brush. Palette paper, which is this kind of waxy paper that I get at, this, uh, at the craft store. It's called palette paper. And that's where we're going to load our brush. Now you go into the water. Blot, like drop, get it dripping off. <clears throat> then blot on your paper towel. There's water in the brush, and that's how the paint is going to float across the bristles and get us that graduation of color. So you start by, and I'm right over the Mod Podge area, but you start blending the color into your brush, and this is what it wants to look like, darkest to medium to water. You never want the paint to go all the way to the other side of the brush, just about midway, and you need that water. And I also use a mop a lot of times. But the first thing I want to do is separate the horizon line. So I'm going to go on the top of that horizon line with that dark blue color. And just set that line there. And I'll just keep going back into my water, onto my paper towel, and then back to my paint. Load the brush. And this is a very big brush because I go big or I go home. And actually, if you use a little brush, you will find that you end up with a stripe instead of that graduation of color. We're also going to do um, under our cloud, probably all the way around the clouds. But let's go under. Oops. Try not to get it on the clouds. And I'll probably paint those clouds with a little wash of um, pearl white. Uh, what else do I want to do? Let's go up the mast and around the... I, I like to let things dry, though. When you're floating, acrylic paint dries really fast. But if you go back into it or if you touch it while it's still wet, you'll pick it up and you'll mess up what you got. So take your time. Go around. That's funny for me to say I never take my time but let's while that's drying actually I can go around this side of the cloud you know what I like a big brush too because it holds so much wa more water so I can keep reloading my brush into the paint without going back into the water because I know the brush holds a lot of water you need water in the brush though you can't do this with a dry brush there are mediums on the market to make this happen for people, but I've never used the mediums. Um, retarder, extender, things like that. I've always just used water, and I just can do it with water, but the acrylic paint does need something to help it along. And for me, that's just water. Um, let's go up the side. And just tuck it under the the flag. Let's go up this side. Now 
will probably outline this too with my black pen, the favorite, my favorite black pen. Keep going on the cloud. But are you starting to be able to see things? Yeah. Things are starting to pop. Um, I'm going to need to go under the flag, around the flag a little bit more. But let's move into the sapphire and we'll go down and we'll get actually do I want to go across the boat with a different color <sighs> on the water I'm going to use the sapphire it's the same thing I corner load and I make a little blended runway pushing the color into my brush and when it's loaded I go right and I put the color up against the little waves and pull it around. All the bristles are on the surface though. It's not just the tip of the brush. You need all the bristles on the surface. Actually, I'm just going to keep this not on the boat. I think I'm going to do it where the boat is a different color. Just where the water is and I keep getting it. I always have a Q-tip handy when I'm painting because you can always just take it off with the Q-tip. But I'm going to shade on top of the boat a different color. I'm thinking, because that the color of the boat kind of looks gray. Or, you know, because it has that, that type of paper. Um, let's go down the side of the sail right here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go on the boat with this color. The boat. But I got to go in the middle here under. I'm just sticking. The, now I, that time I lifted up my brush and just put the color. Um, underneath the wave here, maybe. Hmm. I don't think I really want to do it underneath the wave. I'm going to go along the bottom. And I think Maybe oh, I could go along the bottom of that. I think I'm going to do that. Definitely should be there. It should definitely be up against the sail. But I think I'm just going to go like that. Yeah, I like that. So right along the bottom of the, the book pages. I didn't really want to do that. I think that did the trick though but I want it to go right across here too I don't know why I stopped I should have just gone completely down uh, I'm gonna let that dry and go back up and finish shading around the flag back with the dark color again all the bristles on the surface because you need the water as well it's not just about the paint you need to float the, the, the paint is floating across the water all right I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the sails like I guess I'm just going to use a dark I'm just going to put a little bit of that darker blue up against the mast right here and but 
that's looking good it's maybe my new favorite I'm so excited I get excited when I listen I was inspired by another piece I saw but I mean it's pretty basic right I gotta go oops right down this uh, wave right here oh my gosh it's so cute so now I have to just figure out what I'm gonna put on the boat and I think I'll do it like I think I might do it Payne's gray Payne's gray might look good Payne's gray is a very dark color though um, maybe just a regular gray or I could do it green what color boat sh hole should I have charcoal might be good charcoal is more of like a yeah, it's not as blue. I think Payne's gray is bluer. I'm going to use graphite. Graphite's actually, yeah. That'll be good. I'm using the same brush, just rinsing it out. Get the water out of it, most of the water. Blot it on my paper towel. Corner load. So when I say corner load, I just put a little bit of paint on the corner of the brush. Then I take it to my palette and I work the paint into the bristles going from dark to medium to water. And that, that looks really wet, so I'm just going to blot it again. And that's better. And then I'm just going to take this color and go right up against the waves, but only on the boat. Ta-da! I love it. OMG. All right. I'll probably highlight the top of the, the boat because we lost it a little bit. I love how the water looks. I'm so happy. Like, I'll definitely highlight the tops of the waves, the top of the um, horizon lines. All right, so now I think we can start to um, shade the other parts now that everything's separated and we can paint the sun yellow and I think I'm just going to shape it like we could put stripes on the mat on the uh, not on the mast on the um, sails I'm just going to shade the bottom of the mast and the top And I should probably shade the side, but boy, I'm just going to go over it with a little color. There we go. Uh, so yeah, we could make a number on that. You could put stripes. You could do whatever you want to do. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to go with the colors of the paper are kind of inspiring what I use to shade with. And I think for the... Um, red sails. I want to use like chocolate cherry or maybe not chocolate cherry. Maybe I have Mendicino which is a beautiful I love this color. I'm going to use this. Same exact technique. I'm just going to use that same brush and I'm probably just going to go down the middle and the bottom on both the sails. And usually when you're painting, there's a source, a light source, and all your shading and highlighted would, highlighting would be based on, like the sun's coming from here, right? That's the sun. So that side, actually this side probably wouldn't be. So let's shade. All right, let's do that. Let's shade on the sides where the sun is not hitting. Look how gorgeous this color is. OMG. Alright, so now I'll do everything kind of based on so the clouds, I'll shade them towards the left. 
So we're going to let them dry. What color uh, flag should I make? And what should I highlight the boat with? Like a light gray, right? I think a light gray would be nice. Do I have, oh, I have cadet gray out here. That'll be good. And I can shade the clouds with this too. It might be a little bit light, but um, I think I want to do a coat, a sheer coat of white um, pearl over the clouds first, and then I'll shade. I'm going to come back and finish the bottoms, but I didn't want to go yet because I want to let that dry. So right now I'm just going to shade the top of my boat while I'm waiting. Or I'm sorry, this would actually be highlighting because it's a lighter color. And this brush is big and I just loaded the crap out of it, so that's how I do it. Um, but yeah, it's working. That's good. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Um, so do I want to shade? I'm going to go to a little bit smaller brush though because I'm being me and I'm loading the sucker up. So now this is actually a 5 eighths inch angle. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to shade the clouds. No, 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 no. First I need my white opalescent paint. Uh... See, I usually keep it out, but I don't see it. I have pink opalescent. Would that be cute? It's really sheer. No, I'm not going to do the pink. I'll do white. Here it is. Oh my gosh. I keep love. Oh, I just love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> it makes me happy. All right. So let's just do, I'm just going to use like a flat brush or any around or whatever like this is a number eight flat wash brush water on my brush then you load the brush I just pick up the paint like this and if you want it sheer I should probably even make a I'm just getting it a little wetter and making my puddle a little wetter because I don't want to lose the lettering the words and I'm just roughly going over this really wet. Maybe too wet. I wonder if I have a pearl yellow. I don't know. Yellow is always, it's never on my radar when it comes to colors. But I like yellow. I like gold. I tend to get gold. So say, it's very, oh yay. <laughs> um, Anywho, I'm going to do a, sh a wash of a yellow, too, but do I have, like, a... I don't think I have a pearl yellow. I don't. I don't think I think of yellow when I'm doing stuff. Pink, pink, pink. Pink, pink, pink is always, always what I have. I have tons and tons. Let's see. Nope. I have neon. Ooh, look, I have neon. Let's do that. Why not? This is apple barrel, and I don't know how old it is, but we'll see. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take that flat brush, and wow. That is really neon. Wow, but we're going to shade it and highlight it so it'll tone it down. But see, I don't want to lose the background paper. Um, and then we could, you could always pull some yellow down here somehow. I don't know. That, that's a lot of yellow, but I'll tone it down with, um, actually it's toning down already. Uh, what else? What color flag? How about purple? Do I have a purple? I think purple is awesome. I really, really love purple. And I think I'm going to go with purple. Oh, this is such a dark 
Ooh, I have two. I have this one by Martha Stewart called Twilight Blue, which is really purpley. This one's much darker, but I still think I want to do this one, and I'm just going to water it down. Oops. Flat brush again. Water in my brush, and I'm going to make sure it's nice and sheer. I don't want it opaque. Let's see. But I'll, when I shade it, I'll use an opaque color. See, that's actually kind of dark because it's, so I'm going to take, I'm just going to blot. Hmm. Because I didn't want it to make the matte part of it go away. So I'm going to take this, I want a paper towel. There we go. You guys, I'm so happy. How about doing straight white pearl on the bottom? I have it out here. Not like I'm not watering it down. I didn't even load my brush with water first. And let's see what this looks like. So, oops. Be careful you don't screw up the curve there. And I'm kind of being chippy choppy. I'm not really being perfect. Maybe the ocean is splashing. Maybe it's a lake. I for keep forgetting where I am. It's wherever you want to be. Oh my god. See, I've pulled that down now and it just looks more of what it looks. What is it called? Um, balanced. That is so cool. And I'm going to put it at the top of the horizon line too, like right here. I think I should do it on the boat. No, I have to use something a little lighter. Maybe just regular white. That gray kind of didn't, it didn't pop as much as I, I'm going to add, a, I'm just going to put a little white on the top of the, the highlight on the boat. It, it's just too dark. I want it to be. much better. See that? Alright, let's finish the bottom of the sails. Um, now we can shade the, uh, I think I have to go across the top with that dark blue too, like right across the top, because I did it on the bottom. Right here. Maybe even up and down the sides. I don't know. All right, I got to let Kirby out. I am in love. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I hope that didn't turn off in the middle of something. I don't know. I went away and came back, and I had to plug it in, but we're back. Uh, it's just more of the same, basically. I'm just going around, shading and highlighting all the different places that I think. So let's do this sun. I got out some burnt sienna, which is a color I love. It's like a reddish brown. 
and we're going to shade the back two edges. So first I'm just going to let that let that one dry and then I'll go down there. Um, there's really nothing else I want to do with the burnt sienna. Let's get into I don't know if this gray is going to be dark enough honestly. Let's see. Um, the gray that I used let's see that's the one I used to highlight. What did I use to shade? Charcoal. Oh, that's what I'm going to use to shade the clouds, the charcoal. So I am going to corner load. I have a lot of water on my brush just because I like it that way. This brush has long bristles and it holds a lot of water and I like that. So let's see. How do I want to? So the sun's coming this way. Let's shade along the bottom. <clears throat> Seems a little dark, but I think it'll be okay. I have to step away sometimes and look at it. Because they were so bright and shiny that when you put that on there, it kind of gets you nervous. But I think that's what you want to do. You want to set it down into the background. I'm going to try and go down the side of this. I already did, but I think that's good. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more in these dips. That looks better. Um, I want to put it kind of like making a hmm you know like a dimensional puff so like I think I'll do it this way yeah that worked and then when I get my when I go around it with my black pen I'll be able to, I'll make a line. I don't love that one. But I think I got the point. I got it, you know, I think I made my point with that. We're going to go this way. And we'll do the same thing go this way and they're done let's go back to our sun and make the other side Put a little bit of that neon yellow on the clouds like a reflection that's what I'll do I don't know it's such a sheer oh it's actually not that sheer all right I'm gonna go it's so neon -y. I love it. Um, maybe even a little bit on the water. It turns green though. Yellow and blue make green. I don't like that. I don't want it to be green. Um, how about on here? It looks green. We got to shade that um, flag and I'm going to use, I'll use Payne's Gray for that. I love Payne's Gray. And then we're going to highlight the red and then I think we're pretty, you know what I do want to do though? I want to go, you know what I'll do, I'll do it with Payne's Gray too. 
I'm going to just shade above the horizon line like a little bit more and I'll use Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is like a purpley blue. So let me get my big brush. And I think we need to go down the sides too. See, it's a little because I'm doing mixed media, and there's a the back the background is not smooth. Usually in decorative painting, I would have such a smooth background. Um, my floats had no problem, but uh, in mixed media, you know, you can have bumps and stuff, texture back there. You actually really want texture, so your floats don't always turn out as smooth as mine used to but I love it I'm loving bringing this technique to mixed media so much I really really am having fun with it because I'm making it my own and I love that I'm finally figuring that part out you know and see how the, the Payne's gray is just really helping it was the other color was a little too subtle that's better my sky is definitely a different color than the ocean and I think I'm gonna go down the sides too because that looks good I like how that's framed out and I'm gonna do it around the Sun and then we'll put a little yellow like um maybe not around the Sun I already did that just across the top. Finish out the frame. That looks good. Now I'm going to put down the sides as well with that sapphire blue. You see how much paint and water I have though on my brush? Can you see that? I don't mess around. Like I like to load my brush up and that's the look that I get I'm not a gentle touch I want it one and done <laughs> and you can float a million times to get the look that you want you don't have to be one and done but I'm impatient and that's just the style of painter I am I yes that absolutely framed the whole piece and I think I want to go just like I did on the boat. Maybe I'll take a little bit of the Payne's Gray. Oh, I don't know if I want to. I just want to take much stronger sapphire and just really... Oops. Q-tip. Q-tip. good that's good um what didn't we do oh the purple I'm gonna use Payne's gray for that I'm just gonna switch to my littler brush which isn't much littler but and really try to keep this light so I loaded I just went water blot and then I'm loading in the in the strip over here I'm picking up the paint from the palette paper because I don't want to go in and get a ton of paint on here now the Sun's coming this way so I think I'm just going to go across the bottom and then I should probably highlight the top oh, I kind of pulled that off um, my clouds are done look they're shiny and good let's do a little bit of it's going to turn green though if I try to put the yellow 
on the, you know what I could do, a little bit of white. I'll leave, I'll go white, and I'll do that. So we'll go float just a little bit of sun rays. Maybe pull them all the way. I don't know. It looks a little wonky, doesn't it? I don't love that. Don't love it. Yeah, I don't love that. So, what do you do? You take a baby wipe or wet, just wet a paper towel. And usually, you can get it off before it really sets in. So good, I'm glad. Um, yeah, I didn't like that. I would like to do that though, to kind of get a little glow. But if I put yellow on the blue, it's gonna turn green, because it's so sheer. So I think we're just gonna leave it. I think we're gonna, I'm gonna highlight this red. I think I'm going to use my red pearl because I have holly berry. I'll use that. I really like the white though right there. So let's just, I'll start first on the, um, I'm just going to start on this side. Try and keep it sheer. I love it. I'm going to do it. It'll be good. It's really not a highlight because I don't know, but I like it. It'll be good. So guys, I think we're done. Maybe I'll highlight the sun with a little bit of white pearl too. See, every time I, you know, I'm never done. I just want it to go on and on and on forever. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so say... It's a little shiny. Um, what else? So we could put some words. We could put summer, summer fun. You know what, I gotta do a little something about this. Maybe the light purple. Nope, I think just white again. I'm gonna use the same Pearl white for the flag. It makes it pop. And are we done? I think so. I think it looks all shady and good. So I'm gonna set this over here. I'm gonna grab my pen. Actually, we should really make sure it's dry. So I'll go away, make sure it's dry, and I'll be right back. Well, now I'm gonna use my Uniball Vision Fine Line Waterproof Pen. And I just bought a whole box of these from Amazon because this is my go-to mixed media pen. It's my go-to everything pen. I just love it. Um, so yeah, so just FYI. And let's start outlining a few things. I definitely want to make, let's start right with, now this will still come off. Uh, sometimes with collage, you can, it'll push you out of line, so be careful. But if you go on a place like I just did, where there's um, Mod Podge, it will come off for a sec. I mean, once it's dry, you you know it won't. But don't push too hard. That's the the key. And just let your 
let the paper guide you, but you don't have to push it too hard. It doesn't even have to be exactly, no, I don't like that. That was a little off. Um, my lighting is really, like, bright. Sometimes it just gets in my eyes, my lighting. It's weird. i got to figure that out. But with all these opalescent paints, I'm getting a reflection. So... Oopsie. See, if you push too hard, I'm going to, I have to stick my head a little bit so I can see this. There we go. And see where I made those little shading marks? I just pulled, pulled the line over there too. Didn't really do that anywhere else. Just the clouds. Totally went off there. I'm going to do the horizon line. I'm going to make it a little wavy. And then this I'm going to keep. I'm not going to go under though, I don't think. I might change my mind, but I think we're just going to accentuate the waves. And leave the bottom to kind of blend in. Uh, what do you think? Keeping it is good. Um, did I go under that? Yeah, I mean, that's it. think I want to go under here. It doesn't need it. You could make other little wave marks. Right? And what about the sky? No, I think we're good in the sky. If you want to do rays, you could make lines, but I think we're good. Um, so simple. I love it. So I got to sign it and write um, June, right? Where's all my other art journal pages? Uh, I got April, wait, this is May, April. May, June. So this is March. You know what we didn't use is any white jelly roll pen. I could do I could do some white jelly roll pen. Maybe do white. Still probably not really necessary, right? I probably should have made these with the white because they show up much better. And then make a little highlight lines. Uh, how about the flag? I don't think we ever highlighted the top of the flag. How about Didn't really need any of that, but it looks fine. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to write June in white. And we could put words. Welcome summer. See, I haven't been putting words. This one, time for spring. Valentine's. That just says March. These are just 
practice papers. This I put April showers brings May flowers and this we just put April. So I think we're just going to put May. But we should put little birdies in the sky too for this. Because birdies are always in the sky when you are at the beach. And we'll put, I'm going to put it with the white June. And I'll sign my name over here. 2017. All right, you guys. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's so cute and easy and fast and I love it and pretty. All right, you guys, so that's your June art journal page. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.